All right, hello, hello. I'm going to show you how reconciliation with authorized.net works. So I've already got everything set up with the pages. So you can see right here this movement that's called bank card deposit for 7,898.16. Okay, this is all the information that we have. So knowing that we have a deposit for 7,898.16, we go into authorized.net. We're going to look for February 6th. I'm going to go over here. I already signed in and everything to check transaction, transaction search. And we're going to look for movements around February 6th. So let's just look through the 9th through January, February. Da, da, da. Okay, we'll just pull those out. Search. Okay, so the deposit to the bank account was for, okay, 7898.16. 7898.16. And now we need to figure out which movements right here equal to 7898.16. So I'm just going to go ahead. I only want to see uh, successfully sell. Settled. Okay, I'm going to download these to a file, or I guess I'll just copy them. This will be the quickest. All right. And I want Excel. I like working with Excel more. Okay, so deposit was made on the 6th, and probably going to be one of these that was done before. This was on the 7th, so it's probably this one, 6,000 plus 1. Let's go ahead and figure out what that is, and it equals this plus this, and my computer doesn't like the way this exports, so this is also really super annoying to go through here. I'm assuming that Elaine just goes through and has like uh, the 1,457.87 has the numbers somehow a little bit more nicely written. So here we go. Found it. 7896.16. So now I know if I look over here that the customer was Terry Hannafin and Desai uh, Viance. So this all depends. Let's say somebody else paid. This name could be completely and totally different. So if this name were a name of someone that wasn't in our system, uh, Krista Jackals. Looks like all of these are going to be in our system. I recognize all of them. Maybe Dylan Stern might not. Uh, but we're going to grab this guest name and we're going to go over to Salesforce. And we're going to go ahead and paste it in. Search. Uh, okay. No, that didn't work. Uh, let's go back. I know I recognize the name. Uh, let's go by last name. I think that one, their first name was spelled wrong in Salesforce, so we aren't going to find it. Uh, and if we go over here and we look for a last name, there we are. Here's the opportunity. And if we want to check the payment amount, we'll actually have to go down. We can't use this area because this is the old system. We have to go down and we have to look at the invoice. So we're going to go ahead and click preview. And click on the invoice. Okay, 6440.29. Let's go back to the Excel. How much did we receive? 6440.29. That's correct. So that is the process to check uh, each and every time there's a bank card deposit. So for example, all of these other movements uh, are probably grouped together. So we'd have to look and see what the amount of the next movement was, 
uh, start playing around and doing this box plus this box plus this box plus this box and then see if that equals the deposit until we figure out which deposit it was and then we have the names over here to the side. So this is actually what we're doing and what we have to do for all of 2017. It's super time consuming uh, and uh, pretty difficult. You'll notice that the 6440.29 is the total that was charged. Uh, and if we look at the invoice, it is the deposit, but it's the deposit including credit card fees. Uh, in the new Stripe system, we just completely and totally take out this step and all we have to do is look at the booking totals because Stripe will charge the credit card fees and allocate them for us. So we don't even have to think about credit card fees. We take that all off. Uh, any questions, please let me know.